just adore getting out of the office. It's the base knees. I'm Anna Spear. I'm the CEO of Auctions Plus. In 1986, they had the first interface sale. Back then it was called computer-aided livestock marketing and it was a little bit different to what we have today. Today we're audio streaming the sale so that everyone in Australia has the ability to listen in on the sale and we've also got an online bidding platform where people can log into and bid in the auction. That's pretty cool because 30 years ago, we're 1986, we're, we're well before the internet. These people had the foresight to put together a sale in 1986 where they actually videoed the cattle. To go from that beginning to the sale we had three weeks ago here, which is probably the greatest commercial catalyst sale in Australia's history, an Auctions Plus event, it's, it's just incredible where it's gone to in 30 years. Our market, and this is the beauty of Auctions Plus, is all over Australia. And we've sold cattle to Victoria. I sold some Brahmins the other day that have gone to Roma. If we went to our local sale yards, you know, we only have a small a group of buyers which are going to attend. This way, every person in Australia has the opportunity to purchase our stock. The Auctions Plus really opens up the area for us, so it gives us a good grasp of cattle from Queensland down to Victoria, and it can also see what markets are doing in what areas and uh, whether we can target an area more or less. Auctions Plus is great when the market's kicking, absolutely fantastic, but it's even better, I think, in areas where there are some environmental challenges or access challenges. We're probably shearing around the 20,000 sheep most years. At the moment we're, we're a long way back on our sheep numbers here at Acacia. We're back to sort of 1,500 sheep, but um, yeah, here, here at the moment it's, it's very dry. You know, it's been no secret the drought's been quite far-reaching in, you know, central west Queensland and, and western New South Wales. And most of this region would be under 25% of their normal stocking rate, probably even lower than that. We haven't had a sale here for uh, about 18 months uh, due to the drought. Prior to that, live export knocked us around a lot. And when that there was a live export ban on, and then we had a big flood of cattle from the north come down and prices dropped as the drought hit and it's only in the last uh, 12 months prices have regained momentum and we send most of our cattle away to other selling centres now or we sell them out of the paddock and use Auctions Plus. For people in drought, by selling on Auctions Plus, they got better prices for their stock because the areas that had had rain could access those animals. Well, we're quite distant from the major physical selling centres. They send your livestock some distance to go to a physical sale. You, you sort of committed to taking what you're offered, or at least with you know, the online selling. You don't have to take the price that's offered because you've still got them at home, but at the same time you're um, getting, uh, you know, they're getting exposed to buyers right across the eastern seaboard, really. One of the great things with Auctions Plus is that I can be sitting here, or my animals can be here, we've assessed them, put them on the box to sell, and someone anywhere in Australia can bid on them. And that is the beauty of it. And in the past, we've actually sold animals to Kangaroo Island, South Australia, Victoria, Queensland, and I haven't had to lay them on a truck. Collaboration in the industry is enormous and it's paramount for a successful business. I could actually do everything myself, but I would think that would be a bit like dumping stock onto the market, taking the lowest price, not doing any research, and we totally rely on advice outside that is, has its finger on the pulse with the marketing world. And when we sold stock in October last year, we actually marketed them. The ability to be able to sell and tell the story about your livestock, far better way of marketing our livestock. Okay, so I don't need to tell you much about Auctions Plus, but as we go through the, the presentation, there's two things I'd like you to keep in mind. Um, one is evolution and the other is change. And I like to include this slide in most of my presentations because I think it depicts our industry well and I think it's something that everyone should be thinking about within their businesses. Um, so it's not the strongest of species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but it's the one that's most adaptable to change. And the reason that I think this is so important is that technology is moving so fast that we talk about what is happening today not what is happening in the future, like they were back in 1986. In fact, most recently, the chairman of Ford announced that he believes we're going to see more changes in the next 10 years in the automotive industry than what we've seen in the past 100 years. 
that's a pretty big thing to get your head around. So from an Auctions Plus perspective, established in 1986, this gives you a little bit of an overview of the evolution of the business. In 1986, you could calm yourself with a Tandy computer and the evolution um, through to the internet in, 90, in the early 90s and the ability to then upload photos um, and videos was a game changer for Auctions Plus. And now in 2016, we're working with a smartphone um, that has all the computing capacity in the world. So I think that's a good overview of, of the evolution of the product. Um, but also, I often ask myself, is there, is there, am I looking that far ahead now? Um, you know, back in 1986, these guys on the ground were looking so far ahead, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have mobile phones, yet they believed that they could do objective livestock measurement electronically. Um, so I do wonder what we're going to be doing in 30 years' time and if anyone's actually thought that far ahead. So Auctions Plus, um, now the single largest sow yard in Australia. We're currently selling a little bit over 400,000 head of cattle and 2.5 million sheep, um, which is essentially facilitating the exchange of $633 million worth of livestock. Not bad for a company that only makes about $5 million a year. Why online marketplaces? I'm not going to jump into the slide because I think the video covers it pretty well for you. But one of the things that we are seeing is the evolution of online markets. You're seeing it with Airbnb, you're seeing it with Uber. Um, you're, looking, you're, you're seeing the evolution um, and the efficiencies that are created with online marketplaces. And I believe that's exactly what Auctions Plus is providing to the industry. Two things, though, that I would like to jump into. Um, one is the value of the auction system. Um, that it is the only way to determine true price or have price discovery of a product. Um, I don't, I'm not someone who stands here and says no one should sell direct um, because I think that you, know, you need to use all the tools that are available to you. But I do think that the auction system does ensure that you know what price you should be getting for your animals. The best example I have of that occurred in 2015 when we disrupted the Wagyu market. Traditionally a direct market, at the point in time um, in January 2015, the market indicator was sitting at around 360 cents a kilo live. We had to get Beef Central to find that out for us because there was no market indicators for Wagyu stock at that point in time. In July 2015, it was 420 cents a kilo live and we put a small mob of Wagyu cattle on the Auctions Plus system. Um, so they got national market competition and all of a sudden we were getting 557 cents a kilo live. This continued and in the space of three weeks we, we got up to 604 cents a kilo live and since then it's been averaging 620 cents a kilo live. That in my mind is a really good way to look at how an online marketplace or any auction system can disrupt a traditionally direct market. And not everyone was happy about it. Um, that being said, we've focused now more recently on the feeder market, export market, prime markets and organic markets and had similar um, outcomes. Our platform, uh, you can bid anywhere, anytime and we do both interface and simultaneous sales. So we sell completely online but also are working on projects where we're bringing online buyers into the sale yard environment and essentially looking to f provide buyers with, uh, provide people with more choice. It's challenging. Um, as you can imagine, traditional sale yard environments require um, a lot of stock movements and we're trying to look at ways in which we can streamline those efficiencies. Um, and there's also probably a lot of distrust and pushback as well as to whether or not um, they're letting the fox into the hen house uh, by letting us come in and assist them in those sites. So that's something we're working through. These are just some stats. Um, I thought I'd put them up over the past three years. The system's grown significantly. The reason I like to put this slide up is I actually believe that we're getting to a tipping point. With the younger generations coming through, the more digi digitally tech savvy, um, they're using online tools to make sure that they can get the best price for their stock. Currently, um, on our website, there's about 38,000 people coming through the website each month, which is quite an extraordinary number of people, and we're getting about 70 new registrations each week. So I don't know where they're all coming from, but it, the platform really is growing. So future, which I think is probably the more interesting side of things. From a future perspective, the things that we're focusing on um, are trust, accountability, ecosystems, collaboration and how we can better manage the volatility of our environment. These are, some of the other, these are some of the things that we believe are important to make sure that Auctions Plus evolves to meet the needs of the future marketplace. So creating better relationships, transparency, performance through real-time feedback, aka managing my assessors and dealing with problems in the marketplace when people buy cows and they get steers or they buy ewes and they get 
something else, or Dorpers and Merinos. Um, that's something that we believe is really, really critical. And when I started at Auctions Plus, most people would greet me with, this happened to me 25 years ago, that's why I don't use Auctions Plus. So really, really focusing on how we can ensure that we have repeat customers coming back to the business, but also that we're aware of problems that are out there. So we've built a rating system, um, quite similar to the Uber system. Hands up, who's used Uber? A few, okay. Two-way rating system. Uh, so we've, d we've done the similar thing. So when you get into a taxi, that's the sort of environment you get to see, I believe. I'm a big Uber fan. Um, from an Uber perspective, they've got their bottle of water, they've got their mints, and I'll only give them five stars if they get my bag out of the back of the boot. Um, this reciprocal rating system drives accountability. It's the same system that Airbnb does. You always look after someone else's house if you're staying in an Airbnb, more than you do your traditional hotel room. So we've applied that to the Auctions Plus system. Um, it's not fully public yet. Uh, assessors get feedback on their performance. Um, and at some point in time, it will become public. But at the moment, it's the beginnings of people can't improve unless they get told about it. So we're working through the educational phase. The other thing that we're working on is providing information back to the industry. So we've started building a dashboard that will be for producers, agents, assessors and buyers where they can look at their stock transactions and actually see how they're performing. Um, one of the things that we believe in is ecosystems and sharing data. Currently we have 30 years worth of livestock data that we've held onto and protected um, and haven't done anything with. Uh, we think it's really valuable but still haven't used it. So now what we're starting to do is to put that information back out into the industry. Um, so we're working with a number of different companies to look at how we best deliver that to our customers. And ideally a producer will be able to log onto the system see how they're performing within their region, but also even look at potentially, if they've got particular specifications around their animals, look at the prices that they should be achieving. Um, and so we're going through this process and in, in light of hopefully um, improving accountability, but also understanding of the market. The other thing that we've been focusing on is choice. Um, and this is, this is focusing um, on the spot and the Ford markets and trying to manage the volatility that we see in the current market. Over 90% of our stock on Auctions Plus are sold on the spot market, and currently I don't really know if there is anywhere um, a forward pricing indicator that we can rely on in any way, shape or form. What this means is we're really t price takers on the day. So we've started doing forward contract sales. Uh, we started doing them in 2015. Uh, that's the first sale that we did, and we, this, this sale was in August, and um, the red line through the bottom there was the MLA feeder cattle, ind cattle indicator on the day. Um, the green line is the average MLA feeder and cattle indicator for the month, and then the, the bars are the prices that we managed to achieve. These were some pretty premium Angus stock from down south, so only a very small representation. But we then continued the process um, over the next 18 months, and we've started to look at whether or not we can minimise the volatility um, in the marketplace by selling forward. So, allowing processes to plan, allowing farmers to know what they're getting for their stock, and um, hopefully take some of the volatility out of the market. Our average um, bid price was seven and a half cents above the indicator when we mapped that out. Um, and this graph gives you a bit of a feel for um, how it works. So the blue bars is the, is the, the highest bid prices that we got. The gray um, is the bid price versus the indicator average. So at the start there within seven days, you can see that we'd on average get 10 cents above the indicator. And as far out as 91 days, we'd get up to 17 and a half cents above the indicator. So the further out, the biggest reward, but also the biggest risk. Um, overall, it was an average of seven and a half cents above the indicator. This has only been done on about three and a half thousand head of cattle. So it's still a very small um, test, I suppose, or pilot. Uh, but it's something that we're looking to really continue to push to see whether or not we can try and take that seesaw momentum out of the market. And that's pretty much about it from me. Um, I thought I'd leave you with something that we believe at strongly at Auctions Plus, which is evolution to bigger and better things comes via the development in new technologies, collaboration with customers, and a little bit of courage to try something new. So thank you very much.